Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can use Acrobat to create buttons within pages of PDF documents. Buttons are similar to links in that a person viewing a PDF can click them to launch an action. However, buttons have more complex features that can be adjusted, and buttons can be created from scratch in Acrobat rather than being linked to existing PDF content. Buttons can be configured to launch a variety of different actions, for example, submitting form data, opening a file, or going to a different page. To create a button, open a PDF in Acrobat, and then select the Add Button tool within the Interactive Objects panel in the Tools pane. The cursor will display a blue rectangular button tool when you hold it over the PDF page, which you can click to place a button at that location within the PDF page. The button will then appear on screen with a bounding box and the field name tag opens. You can use the resizing handles of the button's bounding box to change the size and shape of the button. Then type a name for the button into the field name tag shown or accept the default button title. You can then click the All Properties hyperlink that appears within the field name tag to open the Button Properties dialog box. You can see many tabs of settings displayed within this dialog box. Now note that if you resized the button, thereby closing the field name tag, it is possible to simply double click the button to open the Button Properties dialog box as well. You can then click the General tab to see the general button settings. The name of the button is shown in the Name field. To add a tooltip to this button, which is an informational message that appears when a user hovers over the button, type the tooltip text into the tooltip field. In the Common Properties section, you can see properties usually set when a button is added to a form within Acrobat. You can use the Form Field drop-down to set its appearance within a form. You can click the Orientation drop-down to set the orientation of the button within the form. You can then click the Appearance tab to see the button's visual settings. In the Borders and Colors section, you can click the Border Color or Fill Color color boxes and then select a color from the drop-down menu. If you select a border color, you can then use the adjacent Line Thickness drop-down to select a border thickness and use the Line Style drop-down to select a border style. If the button will include text, you can set the font size by using the Font Size drop-down. You can also set the text color by clicking the text color box and you can select the font used by simply choosing a name of a font style from the font drop-down. Next, click the Position tab to specify the exact position and size of the button. You can use the Units drop-down to select the units of measurement to use for the positioning and sizing of the button. Then enter values into the left, right, bottom, and top fields to specify the button's position and enter values into the width and height fields to set the width and height of the button. Now if you click the do not change height and width when changing the position checkbox then the size of the button will remain fixed if you enter values that will reposition the button on the page. Next, you can click the Options tab to set the Layout, Text, and Icon settings of the button. You can use the Layout drop-down to select a layout for the button's text label and icon from the menu that appears.
Now if you select any choice that contains an icon from the layout drop-down, you can then click the Advanced button to open the Icon Placement dialog box. This dialog box allows you to set the appearance of the icon within the button. You can use the When to Scale drop-down to choose when to scale the icon in the button. You can then use the Scale drop-down to select a scaling method to use if needed. You can check the Fit to Bounds checkbox to fit the scaling to the boundary shown. You can then use the slider shown to set the position of the icon within the button. When you're finished, click the OK button. You can then use the Behavior drop-down to select the button's animation behavior when clicked. The label and icon settings for the states of the selected button animation then appear within the icon and label section. You can select a state within the state list and then enter a label to apply to that button state into the label field. You can click the Choose Icon button to open a Select Icon dialog box. You can then click the Browse button within this dialog box to navigate to and then select the icon file to use. Note that you may need to use the Format drop-down in the lower right corner of the dialog box to display the file format of your button's icon. After selecting it, click the Open button to return to the Select Icon dialog box, where you can then click the OK button to add that icon to the selected button state. You can then repeat the process of selecting a state of the button and setting the icon and label for each. That will only happen if you selected the Push choice from the Behavior drop-down. Otherwise, setting the icon and label for the up state for the other choices is the only state that you need to program. You're then finished with this tab. At that point, you can then click the Actions tab to set the actions that occur when a user interacts with this button. Click the Select Trigger drop-down menu to choose the interactive event that makes the associated action happen. The mouse up event is very commonly used to associate an action with the release of a mouse button after a user clicks the button. Mouse down is also used for that same purpose but is triggered by the downward clicking of the mouse button versus the release of the button. You can associate actions with rolling over the button by choosing the Mouse Enter and Mouse Exit events. You can choose the On Focus and On Blur events to associate an action with the event of gaining or losing the focus of the application. After choosing the triggering event, use the Select Action drop-down menu to choose the action that occurs when the event is triggered. Notice how you can attach the same actions to buttons that you can attach to links. After you select an action from the Select Action drop-down in the Add an Action section, click the Add button. Depending on the action selected, an additional dialog box will open and prompt you to specify additional settings for the selected action. After entering any required information, click the OK button. Notice that your selection has been added to the Actions section in the Button Properties dialog box. If programming multiple actions, you can select an action in this list and then click the up and down buttons to reorder the list of actions. You can also select an action and click the Edit button to reopen the dialog box associated with the selected action. Or you can select an action and click the Delete button to delete a selected action. When you have all of the button settings the way that you want them, 
You can then click the Close button at the bottom of the dialog box. To test the button, choose the Selection tool found in the Common Tools toolbar, and then click the button. The button should execute its assigned action. Depending on your action settings, however, you may also see additional informational or warning message boxes appear. To edit a button that you have added, click the Select Object button that appears within the Interactive Objects panel in the Tools pane of the Task pane. Then double-click the button to reopen the Button Properties dialog box. Click the desired tab to make changes to the button's settings as needed, and then click the Close button when finished. You can then click the Selection tool within the Common Tools toolbar to test the button again if needed. To delete a button, click the Select Object button within the Interactive Object panel in the Tools pane of the Task pane, and then click the button to select it. Then press the Delete key on your keyboard to delete the button. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.